Lincoln. A small yet vibrant city in the heart of Lincolnshire. In this film, we will explore the buzzing music scene in this miniature city. And look at talent new as well as old, discovering what the future holds for music in Lincoln. I'm uh, Elliot Morris, I've just turned 24 and um, uh, there are a few from Lincolnshire. I'm a singer songwriter, but with the emphasis on the guitar playing. It. I do sort of else, body percussion um, beats on the guitar that sort of um, that just add a sort of vehicle to the song, really, but yeah, folky pop, I would say. There are a few things that I don't agree with in There's a lot happening and it's very varied and we've got some some good good venues and uh, some uh, some great sort of art century places as well that are uh, really up for supporting live music and independent music. So yeah, it's, it's a really good place, really healthy scene. My thoughts on Lincoln are, I mean, I've only been here for four years and I lived in Hull for a you know, a big chunk of my life. So I've not been here for that long. In terms of music, though, I, I have to say I don't go out that much these days. There's a, quite a, an interesting kind of vibrant scene going on. There's not many of us, but we're having a good time, so it's all good. Right, this is Fee Bingham. Who knows Fee? Yeah. There you see. My name is Fee Bingham and I'm 22 years old. I was originally from Sheffield, but I'm now living in Lincoln after my degree. So I went to uni and I did a degree in Lincoln on accounting and finance because I wanted to learn how to run my own business and do all the financials. But it's just music's always been a passion of mine and something that I took to quite naturally even as a child. So um, it's just been something that I've always wanted to do in a career. I think, I think it's a great city for the music scene. I've done an awful lot with BBC Introduced and they've really... Um, just been instrumental, that was a terrible pun I guess, but um, in in sort of putting me forward for for some good airplay slots and for some festivals and it's just a really great, I guess, it's just another perfect example of BBC being a fantastic institution that, that brings talent forward and I mean I, I've got friends that have done very well through BBC introducing and I've met people through it as well and collaborated with, with people because of it and I guess without it there wouldn't be so much of a platform and, and it's a good stamp to have on your website as well to, to let people know that you've, you've been through the introducing route as well. I think BBC introducing is brilliant yeah I mean it's always a great buzz to hear your record on the radio and or to play live on the radio. You know, the, the kind of music that I was involved in wasn't massively radio friendly. So when we did do a session for uh, Charles Peterson on uh, Radio One, it was just a massive, massive buzz because to hear your own music coming out through the, you know, through the radio broadcast networks, it, it's, a, it's a great feeling. So I think they do a great job introducing you. Playing live is, is an extremely important part of, of being a musician. I couldn't imagine just writing songs in my bedroom or, or for a recording uh, rather than purely to take it out live. For me, I will write a song um, within my head. Okay, I have to replicate this live. It can't be loads of samples and, and loads of layers of music. It, it has to be something that I can strip back and just play on one guitar. It depends on what kind of music you're involved in. I think if you're a tr traditional sort of indie band, you know, with a singer and drums and bass and guitar and all that stuff, uh, it's probably quite a good idea if you've got a fan base. And gigging is a good way of increasing that fan base. I, mean, I always think of Yellow Belly Flats. He's a uh, um, slightly older gentleman and he makes his own instruments and brings them in. So the fact that people are willing to like, you know, give that a listen, they might see a guy walking on stage with what looks like a sardine box and be like, why would I want to listen to this? But they are very like, cool, I'll go with it. I'll listen to see what happens.
in terms of the recession, I suppose if if venues are closing down and then there's fewer places to play, that's obviously not great news for local bands. But after about a year or a year and a half, I guess the recession hit and and they couldn't afford to pay all these bands, so it became uh, acoustic nights, which was fine for me because I I still was just one guy with a guitar, and then um, in turn that became open mic night and. Um, which is essentially an acoustic night where they don't pay anyone. So I couldn't really afford to, to be playing in Lincoln so much for a while. And I think in terms of performing, um, it won't have had too big an impact. Um, but then that's probably because people who are performing already have all the things they need to do it. So I think in terms of buying instruments, then the recession will have an effect on it because it is essentially a luxury. People don't need to buy instruments, so it's not going to be the top of their list. There's a lot more things that are kind of in competition with music these days. In terms of your, your leisure time, there's a lot more uh, choice these days. So I think for, for every pound that you've got to spend on your entertainment and leisure, probably less of it goes to music these days than it used to. I've not heard of any specific examples of, you know, people talking about the recession hitting them in terms of not being able to write songs anymore or to, you know, be creative anymore. I think people are resourceful and, you know, people make music in all sorts of kind of situations, whether they've got lots of money coming through or their skin. I think people are, are still will still find a way to write music if that's uh, what they do and you know, they're driven to write music. I don't think having, having less money doesn't stop you doing that, doesn't reduce the urge, I don't think. I guess over the last couple of years now, it's been picking itself back up again and new venues have opened up and they've pumped a bit more money into the live music and, um, and yeah, it's, it's doing very well again. What does the future hold for the Lincoln music scene? Well, I've read a lot of this guy's stuff, right? A guy called Andrew Dubber, and, uh, and uh, when anybody asks him about the future of music, he'll just say, I'm not, I'm not talking about it at all, you know, because how does he know? More people will go to those music events because that will inspire more people to make music and, and the whole thing will keep going around until you've got bigger music acts pulling in m more uh, numbers of people and, and more venues doing live music. It's great as it is, but it just needs to, you know, people need to spread the word and really get behind it and in order to make it as big as it can be. There's something major around the corner, kind of, all the time and no one will guess what it is until it happens. That you can't always have everything to do the best with what you've got As soon as you make peace with that you'll have anything you want You are not the only one afraid to live and scared to die So as soon as you open up your eyes you'll